Are you ready to win millions in Blackjack? I hope so, because you can do that since we're building the game. I'm showing the game behind me. I have the link to the assets in the description. And what we're going to be tackling now is getting the whole betting system in work, right? Getting that, that betting system ready to rock and being able to up the bet and win some money, well, at least virtually, and having, you know, an around in at hand and get those cards redealt and slowly accumulate a bazillion dollars while the casino goes broke on our awesome, super duper fancy blackjack game. You know, small goals. I'm really excited about this. All right. Let's go ahead and, oh, if you're lost, go back and check the other videos. Again, code and the assets in the description. Let's get going. So we need a way to clear a round over and edit a game script, game manager. And that's when the dealer's hide card will disappear so we can see their full hand. That's also when their text will show up right when the hand is over, when someone busts or wins or I stand twice, so on and so forth. So we're going to add that down here on game manager script. And let's see, I'll start with a comment. Hand is over. All right, and I'm going to be creative with my names like always. You know, round over, ta-da, great function name there. And we need some balloons. It's easier to read if we just create balloons at the top to check if the player bus, the dealer bus, the player's equal to 21, the dealer's equal to 21 instead of having to write those out within our if statements, because it gets pretty long and cumbersome. So I'm going to put these at the top. All right, there we are. And again, those are just checking for those, well, as the variable name states. Let's get in the comment for what's next. So what I'm stating here is if there is no blackjacks, no bus, stands only been clicked once, quit this function because the game or the round is definitely not over. So what the the way I'll do that. So I could have arranged this a few ways, but I thought it was most clear if I put the negation right in front of each variable. So not player bus, not dealer bus, not player 21, not dealer 21, and, and, and. All of these things have to be true for us to exit this function. And if that's true, then the round hasn't ended. We need to get out of this function. So I just return to get out. Then I'm going to create a Boolean variable right under this now, because if that is not true, then the round is possibly over it might not be right we might not have busted but the scores and stand so just to double check to make sure we prevent any um any other cases of rounds not being over i create this boolean and set it to true and then we're going to go through some if statements first checking for the busts of either Oh, and i'm realizing now we need to set up the main text because we're going to throw this on the screen if there is a double bust or just to update them with however the game is going. Let me hit save on all this and let's actually do that right now so we don't forget. So I'm going to go with our casino text just like for the buttons that same text. So I'm going to just copy this or I could do control. Uh, let's add it on its own. It's good to know a few ways to do things because there's always more than one and I don't want this here. I want it actually down here with this canvas. And I want this really large. This would say like you lose, you win, that type of stuff. Casino fill was what I used before. Again, all of these fonts are linked in the description. They are completely free to use. Perfect. And I'll stick with white. And then since it's centered to make it like perfect, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it all the way to the edge, all the way to the edge. And I'm thinking for this deck card, I'm just going to go ahead and hide it. Sprite render. I don't really necessarily need it there. I don't actually even want it there. So goodbye. And now, now we have main text. And maybe I start it with nothing in there. And then we add text as we need it. We'd also actually start it disabled so we could have something in there but for now main text there we are now with that set 
let's go ahead and to the game manager way up here add it within our text stuff oh we already did i knew it was going to happen sooner or later so i added that as a comment perfect there we are main text all right now so if both the player and the dealer bus what do we want to happen well We're going to notify the user or the player that all buffs your bets returned, and then let's make sure to give them that money back. And we still do need to make sure that the bets and the deducting of money is showing up on our scoreboard, but we will get there. Okay, and so we split the pot in two because the player only did half those half the amount in the pot, and we make sure to get that returned. All right, now, now that we know they all didn't bust, let's do our next statement. All right, so now I'm gonna check if the player busts. And only, since I know they both didn't bust at this point right here, then if the player busts, then the dealer must have won. Okay, so if the player bust or the dealer has a larger hand, more points, then the dealer wins. Now let's check for the dealer busting or the player having more points. Okay, and so what happens if the dealer, if the player wins, readjust the text, you win, and then we say adjust the money, the player script. Player script, adjust money, and so we're adding the pot to the money. We don't do anything with the pot here because the house or the dealer always has enough money, so we just don't give it back to the player. Now, what if uh, they tie, right? So what if there's a tie? Not that they both bust. What if there's a tie? I did want to distinguish this because the script or what we put on the screen can be a bit unique. So that's called a push, right? So if there's a complete tie, it's a push and we return bets like we did when both have a uh, busted. So now finally, if all of these things aren't working, I want an else, which is our default kind of something weird happened, a situation we haven't thought of, kind of a fallback measure, round over equals false. And this is where we're using the Boolean up here. So just in case round over equals false, because we don't want to do what we're about to, to everything else. And so what I'm going to do is reset everything, right? So we're going to update the UI or the HUD. So if the round is over, we need to clear out everything, like hiding buttons, showing buttons, updating text, all that. And here's where we show that dealer score. And it wasn't showing up before, but we only want to see the dealer score if the round is actually over. And it would be over, right? Because it's true right here. And this Boolean is just to make sure we didn't overlook something, some situation. We don't want to wipe out all of this or flip all of this and lock the user out of the game by hiding the hit and the stand button if the round isn't actually over. We should have hit all the situations with these if statements, but this is just kind of a backup plan, making sure that the round is over and that we can carry on doing this. Keep in mind, now that we have done this, right, hiding the hit button and the stand button, because the hand's over, they don't need to hit hit, we just want them to be able to click deal. We do need to enable the hit and the stand button now when we deal out the cards. We do want to go ahead and add a bit more to this though. So right here, That's looking good. All right, and then if player bus, oh, we need to make sure on this first one, but I'm glad I spotted this, uh, that the dealer has not busted, right? Because this is checking if the player busted or if the dealer has more points, but it doesn't matter if the dealer has more points if that is a bust, okay? We know that the dealer hasn't busted and the player has busted because we checked that above. So we know they both haven't busted, but we need to check here 
it doesn't matter if the dealer has more points if the dealer is busted. So we want to say dealer bust and 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 we needed this to be false, right? So we need a boom. So we want to make sure, and if we want this to be clear, these need to be together, right? The dealer must not have busted. We wouldn't need those necessarily, but the parentheses can help understand. Uh, and the dealer's hand needs to be greater. So let's save that. I'm glad we saw it. And let's head towards the uh, top. And ooh, I have a little red oh semicolon there. Now I'm going to save all of this. Now that we have round over, where do we want to call it? Where do we want the possibility of the round being over? Well, when the player or the dealer hits, when they get a card, they could bust or hit 21. So that's one of the times we're going to need to check. Well, I guess two of them. Let's go down to hit. Right. So here is the player hitting. And then when they do so, we can check right here. So if the player's hand value is greater than 20, meaning they hit 21 or bust, either way, the round would be over at that point. And then when stand is clicked, Keep in mind, you would only hit stand. We don't need this debug because you're only going to hit stand twice. Once the dealer or auto deal, if they're less than 16, then you get a chance to pick if you want to get if you want to hit again. And then it's over. You would click call because we turned stand into call the text. So instead of this debug now, we can actually say if stand is more than one, the round would be over. And then finally for the dealer. Yep, right here. And I even left a comment reminding us, hey, we still need that dealer score. How kind of me. Dealer score text. We're going to two string it and put that in as the dealer score. Make sure you add, though, the text in front of it that specifies this is their hand value. And there we are, we got that called there as well. And then let's make sure that we get that user's cash updated at the start of each round. Remember, the buy-in is 20. We already actually put it here because we knew we were going to need it. Boom. Cash text, player text, two string is what we're going to need. And while we're down here, let's also real quick update this, right? We need the player score to get updated as they go through a round. So it's going to be similar to what we did for the dealer down here. Except it's just score text. And there we go. And let's go now and take a look up here, right here. And then while we're here, we want to make sure we get all these texts updated. So Let's set up the main text component. We don't want the main text, which will say winner, loser, game over, that type of stuff, to be visible when we start the deal. We already hired the score for the dealer. Let's hide the dealer's card. I'm going to do that down here. So remember that card that's placed over the one card, right? So it's just the back. It's a sprite of a back of a card to hide the other card of the dealer that we don't get to see. And then let's also make sure to reset the hand that we're going to need to go into into the player's script itself. Let me just make sure here. Yes. So let's make sure to reset their hands. Let's create that function over here. I'm going to save right here all the way right there perfect now to reset their hand we're going to go into the player script all the way down to the bottom and add a function to do that we just want to zero out all their info or all their score and the cards in their hand it's pretty straightforward actually for once We're going to use a for loop to iterate through and to zero out card values to hide the cards to get rid of their sprites. And, and we're going to do that by running the reset card function method, which is in this class, right? Reset card. And that's what's going to do that. So we're going to loop through the cards on the table, making sure they're set back to their default state. We're 
We're going to hide these cards. Because we're going to eventually start with all the hit cards hidden by default. Set the index to zero. We're at index zero of the hand of the player or the dealer. Zero out the points or the value of their hand. And we don't have any aces, so we're clearing out the ace list. That is looking good. I can't spell enabled, apparently. Yikes. Perfect. Save that. And let me take a look up here. Let's go ahead and now that we have ace check, do that. All right, that's looking good. I do want to reiterate something, game manager. Earlier on in this series, I had placed card index. No, I had placed get card. You definitely don't want that. So do make sure you have the correct thing, right? You want card index, double and tri triple check that. At some points, I didn't have that in there. Uh, you want card index right there. All right. So I'm going to make sure, again, I save everything, and let's give this a shot, see where we're at. I know the betting won't work. It's not going to be flawless, but let's try. Oh, make sure, I think, game manager. Yeah, we added main text. Okay. Here we are. So we got 12 up here. Perfect. Let's go ahead and hit. Ooh, we win. Updated to 21. Ooh, and our money updated. All right, let's see if we can do another round. Deal. And uh-oh, our hand wasn't reset. That is a problem hit. Oh, oh, and that text is a bit big. Okay, so we are headed in the right direction. Let's clean that up a bit and then add the betting component. And I guess I'm gonna have to take main text down a notch, maybe 160. Great, let me save that. And boom, let's start with making sure everything gets reset. Oh, I think we didn't call it once we made the reset player function, which is awesome, but then we actually didn't call it over here where we, well, where we do need to call it. So right here. That should take care of the, well, the resetting. And then let's get to work on the betting feature. So we already have the bet button added. And so down here, we're going to do bet clicked. New bet, we'll call this. So I wanted the ability for those building lists to mess with the bet button and have different amounts. What this is going to do is it's just going to grab the text of the actual bet button, and we're going to use that as the uh, amount bet. So it's just going to look at that coin, that token. I put 20 on it, and the bet will be 20. It's grabbing the child, which is the text, and setting it to text. Keep in mind there's a dollar sign there, so I have to get rid of that dollar sign by doing this. We're moving one token, uh, one char starting at the zero index, which is the dollar sign. Now we're going to adjust the player script by the amount they just put into the pot. Looks like I missed an equal sign right here. And then we're going to update the cash to represent the amount of money the player currently has. And then we're going to update the pot. Remember, plus equals pot is going to be equal to the pot plus the bet times two. And that's because the dealer would have to match the bet, obviously. And then we want to update this bet's text, which hopefully, yeah, we have up here. So that should help us take care of the betting element. We want to make sure to reward the player, of course. And double check too for the card script. You want to make sure when we reset our cards, it's resetting correctly. At one point in this, I had a deck controller, but I, it's more straightforward to name this object deck. So I did so, right? It's a better way to do that. And if you have deck controller, you want this to be deck. So it's actually grabbing the script of this object. Deck controller doesn't exist. Let's give all this a try. And all of these hid, which is great. We want them hidden at this point. It's counting correctly. It took 20 bucks for me. Let's see if I can add to that. Hmm. It's not updating there, but that's all right. Let's take a look at what's going here. Oh, and I bust 24 is shown correctly. The dealer is 15. That is great deal. And it doesn't give me back that money. Good. I have eight, nine right now. Let me hit hit. 
and it says I have 20. Let's hit again. And notice it automatically there. So I have 9, 18. It resets the ace to be equal to 1 so we don't go over. And let's call and push. Yep, we did tie. So this is all going good. We want to make sure, though, that my bet button is working. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Now let's take a look, a closer look at our bet button. The more, most obvious thing to look into is the on-click listener. So let's, oh, and that's what it is. All right, we need an on-click listener. I'm just going to copy this, paste, bet BTN. What do we want it to run? Bet clicked. Should do it. And let's save. Something else I noticed with our demo, we want to make sure that as we move through the deck, our current card gets reset. So let's go down into here. Yeah, so our current index in the deck is set when the entire deck is established. But if we play for a while, we're going to go through a whole deck of cards. So we want to make sure that we reset this with every shuffle instead of right here. We could leave this. I'm just going to copy it and delete it because we can set the index to one every time because we know there will be different cards there. So after we shuffle, I'm just going to reset that index just to ensure our game well progresses as required. I think we have ourselves a blackjack game. Woohoo! I'm going to make sure I save again. And let's head over to the game. And oh, yeah, I want to make sure that I hide these cards to start. We don't want to disable them. We already set up the code to enable when the game starts or when we click hit. I just want to hide them for aesthetic reasons. And then we're going to play our game. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, remember when we output the money? We want to make sure we have dollar signs on it. For example, notice how our dollars disappear. So let's do that real quick. So our cash text is what we're looking for here. And that's this. So for cash text, we want plus. And then let's go ahead. I'm going to copy this and do a control find. And I'm just going to look for this. Anywhere it appears, we want to make sure we're throwing in the dollar sign. And I think that's that. And then the other one was the total amount of money we have. I mean, that's what we just did. The other one was the bet tax. So the bet tax is right here. And it's going to be bets just like this. And then we want a space and a dollar sign like that. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that. And now I'm going to look for bets text. And I think we got all that. Cool. All right. So let's give this a fancy test. I'm going to do game max click play and deal. We got 14. Okay, 40. I'm mm, going to crank that up. Let's hit. Oh, uh, we busted. Ah, they won with 14. All right. So we have 16 now, but watch. It goes down to 12 because the ace auto uh, adjusts. I'm going to do this and a hit and stand. Ooh. <gasps> Not fair. Again. I'm going to develop a gambling habit from this. All right. Uh, what do I got? 15. Let's take a risk. Let's stand. Mm -hmm. Ah, I guess. Deal and hit. Hit, go, call. Yeah, I swear if I lose, I'm going all in on this. That's a 21. Stand, call, boom. There we are. And deal. Stand. Oh, that's kind of worrisome. No, I'm, I'm standing. Yeah. Deal. We'll stick it to 40 this time. I'm going to say stand and call. And ah, we tied. So notice our points or our money stayed the same. I just lost 20 for this buy in this bet here. Pretty cool. So we have a fully working game and I busted here 22. Woohoo! We're going to de develop a very cheap gambling addiction on our own game. Keep in mind too, if we can go negative right now, so that's maybe a feature you could add and mess around with and build on top of this game. I hope you have a super awesome game. If you do, you should definitely tell me about it in the comments below. You should also hit like and hit subscribe. It gives me warm fuzzies and it's kind. 
And regardless, definitely tell me about what you have built below. And maybe if I should try out another game, maybe a poker tutorial or I don't know, old maid or something exciting. I'm going to now continue my new addiction, which is blackjack gambling.